Hiya, I'm Barry, and I make videos on cute and casual games. Today we're here with Graveyard Keeper, a game I've put in about 20 hours into as of recording. I just want to share 10 things I wish I knew before starting Graveyard Keeper so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. Let's get started. 1. Push big materials with your body. The game mentions you can only carry one large material at a time, but it didn't say anything about kicking them. Walking up to big materials moves them, in essence making you more efficient and productive by reducing the amounts of trips you need to make back to your workshop. 2. Unlock the pathway in your basement. The way your character moves is the fastest they can move usually, which isn't very fast. Later on you can craft potions that can make you move faster, but it's going to take a while before you get there. That said, you can clear out the spaces in your basement area to be able to get around faster. You can even get to town faster by using it. Using it. Don't ask me how that logically works, but it does. 3. Buy the teleport stone. As I said, you don't walk very fast. Try to get a teleport stone as soon as you can. You can buy it from Horadric at the Dead Horse. It's not expensive at the price of 2 silver coins or 200 copper if you prefer that unit of measurement. It will allow you to explore and make it back to your home instantly. Additionally, you can also use the teleport stone while carrying something big, allowing you to move things over vast distances very quickly. It also allows you to teleport to the lighthouse, so you don't have to make that long trek back and forth to talk to one old man. 4. Get more blue tech points by crafting flasks. Blue technology points, I think, are the hardest to come by in the game. You can get it from studying things at your study table, but that costs faith and energy as well. But you can also get it from crafting flasks at your level 2 furnace. You just need to dig some river sand around rivers or the beach, and you are good to go. 5. There are things that you can study that don't cost faith. Usually, most things cost some faith to look over on your study table, but if you need some technology points and are low on faith or saving it up for making zombies or something else, you can study things like powders and solutions which don't cost any faith to study and grant you some technology points. 6. Unlocking technologies For some technologies, there really is an order to unlocking them. If you unlock the wrong one, you might gate or slow down your progress, which is what happened to me. So try looking up a guide or reading through every tree before using your technology points and try to see the order of things before you invest in one. 7. You need to buy stuff. Every character you can interact with in the game is important, including the storekeepers. Their wares are gated by their happiness and friendship with you. For some storekeepers, you can improve that friendship because there are quests that you can do, but for some of them, you don't really have any quests to do, and the only way that you can level up your friendship with them is by buying a ton of stuff. So spend some money so that you can unlock better wares. 8. You need ash. In the game, you can get ash from burning corpses. I didn't burn a lot of corpses early on because I didn't unlock the crematorium, and I just threw bodies in the river, and that ended up with me not having a lot of ash. You will need ash for fertilizer, for growing better quality crops, and retaining crop seeds after a harvest, which I think both are very important. Additionally, you can also use ash to decorate your graveyard for some quick graveyard points, but mostly it's for the fertilizer. You don't need a ton of it, but I find that I had to slow down my progress because I was lacking ash. 9. You might not need that stone garden yet. Just above your house, there is a sign that says it's a spot for a stone garden. I tried to craft it as soon as possible, thinking it was a garden where I can mine more stone. Like, it might be a magical garden with infinite stone, but I was wrong. It's simply a place where you can pass time meditating, which allows you to gain energy more slowly than going to bed but it allows you to stay there even when your energy is full, so you can pass time if you're waiting for some event to pop up on a different day. That said, uh, I don't think you will need it early on, but if you ever do use it, just keep in mind that it will not save your game, and you can only save your game in a bed. 
Ten, you can't move things once you put them down. Once you build something, you can't pick it up and move it around. Some workstations allow you to upgrade after unlocking the required technology. However, most will not, so you will have to demolish workstations and build upgraded new ones, or you will have to demolish workstations if you want to move it around. It takes energy to demolish workstations, but you do get some materials back from it. It really is difficult for people like me who like decorating and moving things around, but you have to plan ahead. So think about that. And that's it for the 10 things I wish I knew before starting Graveyard Keeper. If this helped you, I really would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye!